Several weeks ago, it was requested that I do more tutorials on JavaScript patterns. I started a JavaScript pattern playlist and plan to add more tutorials to it. In this tutorial, we are going to look at a pattern that is central to JavaScript, the callback pattern. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click the bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. Now, callbacks are used throughout JavaScript. In fact, many native commands make use of callbacks. Add event listener, set timeout, map, reduce, filter, and many others. So if you aren't incorporating the callback pattern in your own code, you may want to look at doing that. I've discussed callbacks before, and I will link to those tutorials in the description. But I want to reinforce this as a pattern to consider when coding your own solutions. Let's look at some code I used in the last tutorial and see how we might use the callback pattern with it. Now, the purpose of this code was to act on an object and selectively pull out parts of that object and return it as another object. And this was the object we we're using as a test case. So basically, it's got first name, last name, and then it has a bunch of scores. And these scores are ordered by section and quiz number. And the key represents that. So S1, Q1, and section 1, quiz 1. And you can see the rest of the keys as they are there. And so the code that we wrote before, which I've simplified a bit so we can focus just on callbacks, it would selectively choose parts of an object and then return that. So right here, we pass in the object, and then we indicate which section we want to retrieve. By default, it will do section 1. And then using a for in loop, it goes through that object and creates a second object by copying the key and the value into the new object based upon whether it's of the right section or not, which is what we check right here. So this function is very useful for pulling out parts of those objects and allowing me to work with particular sections of scores. Now, what might make it even more useful is if I could, at the same time I'm pulling these out, work with that data. So for example, maybe I want to do something with the scores as I pull them out and put them into a new object. Well, using the callback pattern, we could do that. Now, functions in JavaScript are first class and therefore they can be assigned to a variable and passed around. So with the callback pattern, what we do is we pass a function into another function. So this here would contain a function, and we can do that because functions are first class in JavaScript. And then we use that function to process some of the data. In this case, we would use it to process the value before we set it up into a new object. And I can choose what how I process that by the function that I pass in. Therefore, it provides a lot of flexibility. So let's look at how we might take advantage of the callback pattern with this pull scores function to make it even more versatile. So here I've added a parameter so that I can pass in a callback if I would like to. Now, let me just change some things inside this if statement so that we can actually use that callback. The first thing I'm going to do is set the value into a variable. Now, I want to do that because then I can act on that value if I need to. Right here, I'll just change this to the variable that I assigned the value to. Now, in between these two lines, this is where we would check the callback. Make sure it's a function. We don't want to invoke the callback function unless it really is a function. And so we check that, and then we invoke it, pass in the value. It returns its results, and then those results get placed 
here instead of the original value. Okay, so let's look at how we do that. So a simple if statement, and we use type of to check that the callback is a function. And this is an important step in a callback pattern. You want to make sure that before you invoke that function that has been passed in, that you verify that it is a function. And that's what we've done there. Now we can simply set this up like this. We invoke the function here and we pass in the value. And whatever it does to that value, it returns it to our variable again. And that variable gets assigned to the key in the new object we're creating. So there we have it set up. Now all we need to do is test it out. Let's save this. And let's first test, make sure it's working even if we don't pass in a callback function. So console, we'll just take a look at that new OBJ that it returns. And we can see that it is still grabbing section one of the quizzes into this new object. Just to verify that, here are all of the section one, and it grabbed those and put those in, even the null value. And so that's still working even if we don't pass in a callback. But now we want to see the flexibility of this. Let's go ahead and pass in a callback. Let's say that we wanted to take any null values and set them to zero. So if the quiz hasn't been taken, if no value is there, then we are going to say that it's just zero. So we can pass in a function. We can do that with an anonymous function. We want to make sure we give it a parameter to accept the value that is passed in. And then we set up our function with what it's going to do. And there's a couple of ways we could do this where we could replace the null value with a zero, but we'll just use a traditional if statement. We'll just check to see if it's equal to null. If it is, then we return zero. Now, if it's not equal to null, we want to make sure we, we return the original value. So we need to add an else. We do it like that. So now this function, put some returns there, this function is being passed in to the callback variable. Then a callback variable is checked to see if it is a function. If it is, then it invokes it, passes in the value that we retrieved right here, passes in that value, the function processes it, returns it to the variable, that a variable gets assigned to the new object. So that should replace any null values with a zero. And the original value should just be returned. I noticed I added an extra L there. So the original value should be returned if it is not a null. Okay, let's save that and see what we get. Refresh. Let's go with new object again. And now we can see that the value is zero. Now, what if we wanted to do something even more? What if we wanted to return the score for all of these based on zero to 100? So for example, this one would come back as 90 because it's nine out of 10, five out of eight. This would still be zero because there would be no score for it. This one here would be 20. So based on 100, what would the score be? Well, here's how we could do that. We re still return zero if it's a null value, but if it isn't, then we can process it a little more. And so what I'm going to do here is run split on the value, and we're gonna split on the colon. What that's going to do is give us two values in an array, two separate elements in an array. Zero will be this, position one will be that. And then we can easily figure out what the score is. And we will return that score. We're gonna do that by dividing the first element by the second element. And that's going to give us a decimal value 
five divided by eight. And then if we multiply that by 100, that will represent a score between zero and a hundred. So we can work with it like that. So let's go ahead and check this one out. Save that. Let's take a look at new object again. And there we have the different scores. We can see that we still get the zero, get the 90 here, 20 as we looked at before. So that's allowing us to process it even more. So the callback pattern, there's some important advantages to the callback pattern. One is you don't repeat code. It helps you not to repeat code. So we use the same function, but we pass in different functions to process the value instead of redoing things for each one of those. We simply send in a new function when we want to do something different. So it helps prevent repeating of code. It also makes your functions more generic and versatile so that you can handle a lot of different functionalities that we've been able to see we handle two different things here. And it can make your code more maintainable. This main function that we use over and over, we only have to deal with the code in one place, so it is more maintainable. So those are some of the advantages that we get from the callback pattern. All right, before we are done here, please hit the like button. And remember, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. There are additional benefits to certain levels. You can follow a link in the description for that. You can also contribute by visiting my website. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button or click the circle link on the left, one with my face. Also click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right and visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com for a complete list of tutorials and other resources. Thanks for watching.